Hi everybody, you have fun what to play next. We're bringing everything that is awesome, and I do mean awesome in gaming. This is a Shadowrun. If you're not familiar with it, um, it replaced the old D&D. Uh, so if you have run into that online or if you're watching the movie, etc., um, it was really interesting. Return to the Union, despite Coyote's clear desire to stand on our own two feet, Paco needs to help her through the door into the seamstress's union. Heads raise in the front room of Bar Falls, strangely silent. Paco stands by her side now, not speaking, his dark eyes flat with fury. Coyote presses a rag to her clawed up face. So, um, we go and we save this girl because we're trying to track down our friend's killer. We're just such nice people. He offered us money. Um, Almaturgic armor. Decker clothing. Or I can look awesome. We love d, &D because it's modular. So, um, basically everything is a choice, and your choices don't affect the story, they affect gameplay. You end up just a completely different person because of them. So, uh, we go to rescue Coyote, we're hoping she can put us on to a little bit more information, and, um, she needs surgery really badly. We pulled her out of this guy's lair where she was trying to run a job, and now she's worried about the guy who gave her the job. In Shadowrunner circles, the term doctor is often used quite liberally to describe any saw bones with a needle and thread. In the case of the Union's resident me medical expert, nothing could be further from the truth. The safe house boasts a fully equipment equipped medical suite complete with shamanic fetishes. This is sixth world medicine of the highest caliber. Doctor's an unassuming sort, if not for the sprightly spirit perched on her shoulder. Like her own personal gargoyle. The spirit's burning eyes follow you constantly, even as the doctor's own eyes are buried in her charts. She does look up long enough to acknowledge your approach. I'm Dr. Castle. I understand you were instrumental in bringing Cowdy back to us. Thank you for that. So those of you were the ones who patched her up impressive work. And no, she no, fixing me up her arm. That was a piece of work. You're welcome, Doc, and I gotta say, it was some work you did on there. Talents might be going to waste down here. I praise for, this, for a simple arm swap, especially since she wouldn't let me repair her face. I can tell you it's price to find a full-service med bay under a dive bar in a slum, don't be. This is a Shadowrunner bar, after all. For a purveyor of cyberware and trauma kits, there's no better place to set up practice. I patch runners up, install and maintain their cyberware, and provide medical supplies for their runs. I might not be as mobile as Doc Wagon, but I'm the next best thing. Um, so you can probably buy uh, medical supplies from her. There we go. I don't have a ton of yen. Doc Wagon Gold Trauma Kit. We're probably going to have to fight this guy, though, so I do want to pick up something. Um, cyberware. What do I have? Vision Magnification Silver Tech Arm. Ah, I'm almost out of money here. I do want a cool cyber arm, though. I'll replace my right arm. Cyberware causes essence loss. It affects the magic rating of your character. Magic is important for spellcasters. I am a hacker. Um, I chose to play one of my own characters, the Jerk, instead of um, really getting into uh, the battle aspects. I want to get into the technical aspects, because that's where they went. They went into the future, and they really just, they owned it. They did a great job. Shadowrun is so old uh, that you can't it kind of doesn't matter where when it's set, um, because they just shot it forward to where they understood technology would be. While modern medical technology makes surgery less disruptive, it's still an ordeal for the body and the spirit, requiring extensive recuperation. Trained in the ways of the spirit world, as well as the scientific world. Interesting. It's on your shoulder. This little guy supports he the healing rituals I perform on my patients after surgery, Dramatically reducing their recovery time. Not standard, of course, but the results speak for themselves. Okay, so she's we're good with our cyber cyber stuff here, and we have some medical equipment. So we need to go pick our guys back up um, and you know see if we can get some business done because I do need to speak to Coyote, and she's not going to talk to me until after I, I find out what's going on with her with her job. Eldernon. Past the bar, the edge of the safe house becomes somewhat indistinct due to the magical haze surrounding a particular elf. The man seems only half in this realm, his mind wandering in the far horizons of astral space while his body pedals his otherworldly, otherworldly wares. To ease your way into the sixth world, I offer the best in magical folk eyes, spells, and fetishes. Not my thing. I'm not a magician, um, so basically we're gearing off. I mean, no credit. 
Awesome. Change your clothes, change your life, right? Not only will you look better, not that you look bad now, but each one will help you get on the right side. Take a look. What do we have for clothes? Ellie Punk. Oh, it's too bad you won't even want you to look at it unless you have the cash. So I gotta go pick up some more cash. I'm running a little bit low. Uh, but we were able to stock up really great graphics. Really cool the way that they handle that. Theodore Buster Grumman is a well-groomed orc. Dressed with pre precision that suggests the straight lines of a military officer's uniform. The other defect in the picture is perfection is the man's cybernetic right arm, obvious enough to be noticeable, not so obvious as to ruin the lines of his suit. Friends call me Buster. I also answer to Sergeant, Sir, and even Theodore. How can I help you? What do you sell? Things that go bang. Mark my words, they're making a comeback. Uh, well, I'm out of cash, so obviously we're gonna blow this pop stand. Which is too bad because it looks like you could get a little bit more hacking equipment and so on. They follow a very tight storyline. Um, that's what's neat about these. So while you can wander around a bit, um, it's not really the point. The point is to get a job done. So right now we're doing a shadow run and that's what we're going to do. Like there's no question of this. Um, it's not, you know, it's not like we're going to suddenly swerve right here. See. Optional. Meet all the black market vendors. Find the mud bay. Investigate Sam's bunk. Interesting. Speak to Mr. Delilah. Mission items. Unique pieces of glass found near broken lights. Bar tab receipt from the night of the murder signed Sam Watts. Servos so Coyote. So we went and we found her. Turn to the Union. Despite Coyote's clear desire, etc. I guess. Investigate Sam's bunk. Oh, Sam had a bunk down there. Interesting. I did not see that. Let's go back in. We need all the clues that we can get. Um, it looks like a serial killer took him out. So like I said, interesting stuff here. Um, Miss the yellow hourglass. Bunks and ass and reeks of booze. See, searching through the sheets, blankets, pillow, you find old, an old photograph of the image. Pictures of a blonde boy and girl, both about 14. They appear to be twins. The boy has his arm tight around the girl's shoulders and is mugging for the camera. The girl's planting a kiss on his cheek while making rabbit ears behind his head. Check the back. Written in a woman's hand are the words Sam and Jessica. Lake Smimish State Park, summer 2040. Been that. I didn't know he had a twin. That's interesting. Let's look through. Okay, so that's my locker. No. And what was the other one? Return to Coyote, speak to Mr. Delilah. Very basics. Okay, that's we're good. So, Street Samurai, Freelance Operative Shaman, Decker. I'm a Decker. That's my menu. Um, speak to Coyote. You're back soon. God, he did a number on her. I think the highlights of the Wolves game will be back on soon. Want to take a load off? I found something in the bomb. What was it? A photo. Did you know Sam had a twin? Yeah, I did. He mentioned her once or twice. I didn't know that. It didn't sound like they got along that well. He was rambling on about her the last time I saw him. By that point, he was completely gone. I really couldn't follow what he was saying, but he sounded miserable. Your comlink chips chirps, and the screen shows the smiling face of an officer. Is that a guire? A gut? A gear? He's smiling. Must be about money. Are all cops as happy as you? What a pleasure to hear from you. Yeah, yeah, we're buddies. Let's go dancing soon. Listen, the Ripper got another one. The victim worked at NTSB investigation facility down in the docks. You owe me for this. Put it on my tab. You need there. You there now? Better get here quick before McCluskey arrives. Image of the PDA dissolves. Another Ripper murder? Where? To the docks? I gotta go. I wanna help. You dragged me out of the Royal before something bad happened. Worse than getting my arm torn off and Sam was my friend. You head to the docks and I'll see if I can track down Sam's sister, Jessica. She might be able to help interesting yeah I'll see you when I get back definitely that's good info take a cab speak to Mr. Delilah that's definitely something I want to do Senior Delilah I want, let's have a word about your talk show I want to talk about late night late night with Delilah Algernon Eric Merlin Gruberman David Fry hold on where's Mr. Delilah Algernon. That's a neat trick. 
So I'm gonna have to look around a little bit more and find him. Eric Mersman. Speak with Mr. Delilah. I wonder if he's up top. Let's go top side, because I do have a contact now. Mm -hmm. We'll also be getting back to um, a little bit more of the story as far as Johnny Clean. Uh, there he is, as far as uh, Sam's murder is concerned. Mr. Delilah looks small and tough with an untraceable shoddy on his back and a heavy vest or nose trench coat. He's got the air of someone who gets things done and occasionally does them himself. He might be an ex-runner, one of the rare ones smart enough to move over to management when he felt his reflexes slowing down. An island in the Pacific. What do you want? An island in the Pacific, palm trees, booze, that sort of thing. Run was a bust. Why didn't she tell me herself? That's a show of disrespect. She's downstairs in med bay. Got her arm torn off. Holy hell, how'd she make it back? She got some help. Looks you up and down and takes you in. I bet she did. Okay, tell Coyote no hard feelings. I'll have someone else get the stones. Listen, you look like the sort of woman who might run a crew of your own one day. Might need a little talent. When that happens, you come to me and I'll set you up. Remember that. So he just lets me go. That's interesting. I guess I'm hopping a cab out of here then. Um, no harm, no foul is an excellent. <laughs> I'll take that any day. So, win-win. Um, uh, I thought I would get a little bit more pushback from her boss there. Because um, she did, we did blow the job for her, essentially. I mean, not that she really could have kept going. She couldn't have. Um, but I've got to make it down to a crime scene. So I'm going to go ahead and pull a cab. Get a little more about Sam. He has a twin, so that is so cool. Um, like in the description below, if you do want to play along, you know, it's totally, it's a mile a minute ride. Leaving Seamstress's union behind, you head to the docks. The Ripper killed Sam, and maybe he or she slipped up with the latest victim. Left some useful evidence. Only one way to find out. South Seattle's your typical industrial area. Grit, grime, and gray. Rain doesn't help matters any, and layers of dick dirt mixed with abandoned wood pallets repurposed into makeshift furniture for the day workers. Garbage collects in the gutters of the broken down street, disreputable as this district's middle name. Your destination, the National Transportation Safety Board Warehouse, is located on a small strip of docks towards the less maintained end of the waterfront. Despite the presence of those who linger in such places, it's quiet as you approach the gate. Link in the description below. Also down there is Gamer Grind. Gamer Coffee ship to your door. You can put your logo on merch. You can support ours. We love the Pirate Queen. It's so cool. We love our logo. We love when you guys pimp us out. Um, also down there, KOFI. All my social media links, but KOFI, you can buy me a coffee one dollar. But we're on Patreon. Uh, hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, etc. Definitely hit the subscribe button. That's totally free. So hit that up. Hit the bell. And you, if you're following Shadowrun, you can do that. We love it. We love playing through the module. We can kind of but I know what's happening in Sam's world. Really fun, um, great layout. Really just really well done, great art, etc. Um, you can really explore our world as the um, radiant energy and technology, etc. mutated us. Completely different. Um, you get to talk to the people around town, etc. So definitely a good time. But if you're just looking to see how gaming evolved, which is one of the reasons that we're into this, is um, it did take baby steps forward to um, developing RPGs, especially way back in the day. Um, we cover that sort of thing all the time. So when you hit the bell, a little thumbnail will pop up and you can see if you want to spend 10, 15 minutes with us. We love you guys. We love that you're as long for the ride and we'll see you next video.